And today I'm going to present two scripts that I wrote uh, uh, and that are still under development. Uh, development has been slow, but they're still under development. So the first one is about flow maps. This, I think, is a very beautiful, excellent example of a flow map, and I can't achieve results this good, but uh, trying to get there. I became interested in this kind of problem when a friend of mine, during my PhD a little while ago, um, asked me, hey, Paolo, do you know any, any software that draws a decent flow map? And I was like, no, so I'll try making one. Uh, and then I tried looking into things. There have been some relatively early efforts by uh, an important fellow named Tobler in uh, the 80s and 90s. This was kind of the state of the art for a long time. It was a paper by some computer science uh, people out of Stanford. Uh, but there really wasn't a whole lot until recently. Uh, uh, Bernhard Yeni and his group started uh, started producing some pretty nice uh, software packages that use force directed uh, force directed movements of the flows to try to create a map like this. You see, the the real issue is clutter. It's it's easy to draw lines on a map. That's not hard. But getting lines to not land on top of each other and produce incomprehensible spaghetti is the difficulty, right? So uh, some of that uh, has been written about, some of Bernhard's, et Yeni et al.'s work uh, has been written about, and some basic ways of producing these sorts of things have been written about in, say, QGIS. Uh, there are some sort of hacky kind of ways people do it by drawing geodesic lines, for example, which have imperfections about how things appear on certain map projections. But this, this is beginning to become reasonably possible in that you can now, rather than just draw a simple line between two points, you can, you can craft where exactly those flows go. My library produces something like this. So I wanted to make a uh, or library script. It's one Python file. Uh, I wanted to make a script that would allow me to produce maps like this, where the arrow can be thicker, wider, uh, different color, what have you, to represent the magnitude. And it would also show you where things are going. And importantly, I wanted it to happen on any map projection. I wanted to be able to... Uh, throw any, any like this is a, a custom azimuthal map projection. I think I centered this one on uh, Toronto, I'm not sure. Um, so given, given any kind of map projection, can I get some decent geometry that will give me lines that don't clutter too much? I had a lot of thoughts about how to go about this. I was originally thinking about building custom azimuthal map projections for every arrow and calculating the geometry of that arrow and reprojecting it, but that's ended up being excessively complicated. And so I ended up settling on a relatively simple answer, which is cubic splines, which is a, a linear or a way of interpolating a line as it passes through three points. So fairly straightforwardly, I decided, well, okay, we have an origin, that's O, we have a destination, that's D, I can draw the straight line between those two points in the coordinate space of the map projection. And then I can decide to bisect that green line and build another line arbitrarily out here so that I get this point and then I have three points and then I can do a cubic spline in between them. Fairly straightforward. In order to give the cartographer some ability to customize this shape, I wrote the script so that you can either go this way or the other way. And you can also move these, essentially this point. So you can decide uh, to bisect the green line at the halfway point, or you can do it over here or over here. And you can also decide how far away to place that other point orthogonally which means basically that you can get something a little bit more resembling the Nike swoosh symbol, right? 
You can get a swoopier curve if you so wanted, and you can make it swoop the other direction if you so wanted. So user parameters basically include these, these distances. This is just a bit about how in order to do the mathematics involved, the x coordinates have to be strictly monotonic. They have to be going positive at all times. So the curve can't go back on itself. So I have to rotate the curve, do the geometry, and then put it back where it actually belongs. It's open source, it's on GitHub, it's free. Uh, feel free to use it. it uh, there's the URL. It uses a lot of the usual usual suspects, GDAL, of course, uh, SciPy, Shapely, and I take a CSV input, pretty simple CSV input, uh, which I decided to do for the sake of universal ability. That's a very easy format to produce, even if your data is not already in that format. You need an, uh, you need a latitude and longitude for your origin and a latitude and longitude for your destination and some number representing the magnitude, whether that's kilotons of material shipped or number of people moved or whatever that is. So as long as you give it a file that looks like this, it can work uh, with what you do. It's a command line tool. I've been thinking of building a simple GUI for it just for people who are scared of the command line. Uh, but uh, but quite easily, Python, script, input file, output, and optionally, if you want, uh, there's a default projection it uses, but optionally, you can define any projection you want by giving it a proj4 string or giving it the URL to that string on spatialreference.org. So you can make examples of the sorts of things you can make, again, uh, with this map. It still suffers, like many other flow map, from if you have 200 lines, it's going to get pretty cluttered. And that's kind of a fundamental, fundamental limit when it comes to flow maps and visualizing something on so much screen real estate. But another example of how you can do it on any projection you want. Right, and the script basically just produces the arc, so several hundred vertices along this line. You can also decide how many vertices you want. If you want it low, uh, low detail, you can make those a minimum of three vertices, but I think the default is 200. Um, it produces the line, but then in addition to the line, I supply a QGIS QML file, which is a style definition file. So in QGIS, it, uh, you load that file and it gives you this, what you see on the screen. It gives you this color ramp to the arrows. It gives you uh, a thickness multiplier for the size of the symbol based on that flow mag attribute. And of course, that's not going to be right for anybody's uh, arbitrary data set. But if you fiddle with those numbers, you can get you can get which, uh, something that works well. The output is, uh, I, think it, I think the script, if I remember right, will do GeoJSON, shapefile, and GML. Uh, so whatever works best for you. And then, uh, of course, symbolize accordingly. Flow maps. Thank you. Should I do the second talk, or should I take questions? Now? I think we can take questions if there okay. are any. So, are there any questions? Yeah, Peter? Yeah, no one else has a question, of course. First come, first serve, so. Uh, I was wondering, maybe it was just uh, hard to see, but on one of the examples you showed, it seemed like uh, some of the flows were also being merged. Or yeah, was that a visual uh, 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 No, artifact? they're not. They're okay. not being merged, not in this. Uh, that that would be nice to do. That significantly increases the complexity. Um, so there have been people who have done edge bundling. That's a very mm -hmm. common thing in, in some of the computer science stuff. Um, I don't think it makes a good map, <laughs> personally, as a mm -hmm. cartographer. Uh, it's an interesting approach, but uh, but it doesn't it doesn't produce something like this, 
right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, we see, yeah, there's some kind of edge bundling going on in that top left there. Um, and these, these folks have a branching thing going on as well. My library doesn't do that. I'd love to do that one day, but I haven't figured out yet how to do it. The, the other things I do, I've been playing around with here is adding a Z dimension so that it's a vertical curve so that you can see it in AR, VR. That's pretty easy to do, actually, uh, to, to make XYZ coordinates that also curve upward. But yeah, no merges yet. <laughs> All right, thanks. It's for online. Oh, oh for online. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, th thanks for that, uh, Paolo. And of course, as colleagues, we should talk offline and not in this meeting. Uh, your work has one big assumption, and that these flows are one directional. Yes. And in our FAO food transport network, work, we have found that they are often not. Right. Food gets transported both ways, sometimes over the same links and connections. Right. Uh, I'd love to hear one day, perhaps, unless immediately it comes to mind to you, how would you visualize that cartographic? The, the offhand answer to that, I think there are a few two-dimensional ones in this drawing here where it leaves and also comes back between the two different places. but. If you constantly curve counterclockwise or clockwise, whichever one, then you go this way and then you return this way, right? So, um, however, it is, it would be trivial to add an arrowhead on both ends, right, of an arc. Right now, the style file I have has an arrowhead on the destination side, right? I could easily add an arrowhead on the origin side now you have the ambiguity of is are you going to make that arrow thicker or wider depending upon this direction or this direction of traffic? Exactly. So so that's a that's a symbol question. And we have 20,000 arcs in that Yeah, you can't you can't visualize 20,000 arcs in in one view, I don't think. But well, and and the, the, then you can then we can start talking about things like filtering and querying and but yeah, yeah no, it's nice to have these different views, actually, a view of a cartographer and a view of, uh, yeah. Um, We're shopping around potatoes and carrots. Yeah, but yeah. It's, uh, that's the well, Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but it's nice there. So we have a coffee break to discuss further. Um, okay, thank you very much for this presentation. And uh, again, the floor is yours for, for, for the <laughs> second one.